So let's try to do this as a training session. And then maybe it's going to be useful for other fellows who are also starting. Do you feel comfortable with this? If you want to, you know, just turn off the camera. Don't be shy. Okay. okay. Uh, you can do whatever feels comfortable for you. I will share my screen. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Uh, yes, I can see it. Okay, so let's go to our wiki doc. What have you, um, what, which videos have you watched on our wiki doc? Um, so, I, know. I watched how to use wiki doc editing tools. I watched uh, Dr. Gibson's introduction. Then I watched difference between micro chapter and single page, how to create a user sandbox. Yeah, these are the things. Yeah, the main is how to use Wikidoc editing tools. That's the one I've seen twice. Okay, okay. Let's start with the basics then. Um, you, yeah, we usually advise people to start with the home page, then types of pages, then pink part of the micro chapter, then the blue part, then the green part, then the editor's help menu, because these are the most fundamental ones. Okay. But, okay. I will try to do this. So we have a few different types of pages on Wikidoc. On Wikidoc, Wikidoc is a platform like, you know, we, we have many other um, platforms in the internet. We have Medscape, we have UpToDate, but on Wikidoc, we, mm -hmm. um, we are a free source of reliable medical information. And we want to provide our readers the most updated and reliable information. Um, regarding the many different topics that we have in medicine, okay? Many of our readers are medical students, residents, and some physicians from, you know, abroad. So in order to achieve this, we have a few different types of pages. The one that we are using the most these days is the micro chapter. I'm going to show you an example of a micro chapter page because, okay, Pardon me. I will start with a more simple one, a single page okay. chapter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because then it's very easy to understand. A single page chapter looks like a page on Wikipedia. You know, all the information is in a single page. That's why it has this name. We have a few um, pages that are like that. I think Epstaxis is like that. Oh, no, no, no. It's already micro chapter. Okay. Um, yeah, actually I've seen this video. Uh, so single page chapters are the ones that will be in a single page in just two to three scrolls. Whereas micro chapter is something that has subsections and we can yes. go into each of them. Yeah. Precisely, precisely. So for example, we have this lactic acidosis. We have the, the sections of the chapter are always the same be it a single page chapter or a micro chapter. The difference is that in a single page chapter, they should have just like one paragraph, two paragraphs, no more than that. And for a single page chapter work for us, like what's the criteria? We should have no more than three page scrolls, maybe, you know, approximately. So for example, we have one here, then two, mm -hmm. then three. Okay, so these pages is being actually migrated to, we are migrating to a micro chapter format. So that's why we don't have lots of information on this. Okay, but just as an example. Okay, so sure. most of our chapters these days are being written in the micro chapter format because it allows us to have more flexibility. We can add much more content. So the page that we use as a reference for our fellows is the gonadoblastoma page. Okay. So here is the uh, gonadoblastoma page. It was written by Sahar, which was the person that taught me everything that I know about Wikidoc. He's so, the one who introduced me about Wikidoc too. Yes, yes, she, she, she's fantastic. Yeah. So we have many different pages here and each page relates to a section of our chapter. So for example, overview, 
historical perspective, classification, pathophysiology, causes, and then we have many other ones. These pages, they are divided in three categories. So we have the pink chapters, we have the blue chapters, and the green chapters. The green ones are related to the treatment. So they are in the bottom because when you want to read about a disease, you should get you know, some information about the disease first. Mm -hmm. The red or pink ones are regarded the disease. So what general idea I should have about a certain disease, how I should differentiate, for example, the disease I'm writing about from other kind of, of illnesses. And the blue ones are related to the diagnostic section. So how can I find, find out if a patient has this disease and not the other ones, okay? Mm -hmm. So this was thought to be as straightforward as possible. We really want to make like the top priority on Wikidoc is to have reliable information, updated information. It's not to have any copyright issues because we have sources that we can copy and paste like governmental sources, such as the CDC pages, but 95% mm -hmm. of them, we are not allowed to copy and paste. We should always add references and rewrite the content in a way that you know we are not infringing any copyright, um, any copyrights. So um, let me see. But yeah, an, another priority that most people forget is that we want not only the information to be reliable and updated, but also easy to find. Because for example, have you tried to use up to date? It's a yeah. mess. You have to read the whole page to find the information that you want. So we don't want mm -hmm. this on Wikidoc. We want, for example, to find, okay, uh, let's think about some um, disease. I'm gonna select one of the, you know, uh, of the sure. chapters that I wrote. So for example, um, Opsoclonus myoclonus syndrome. I want to know about the treatment. Where's the treatment? Treatment, treatment, treatment. Okay, it's here. So we want to have the information as easy to read as possible. So we really emphasize the use of bullet points, the mm -hmm. use of hyperlinks, because for example, bullet points may forces you to write sentences that are more direct you are not going to write huge paragraphs explaining the, the medical therapy, okay? And when we use um, hyperlinks, so for example, dexamethasone, what the hell is that? Maybe I'm a medical student in the first year and I have no idea what this medication is. So I can click it and, well, we are gonna work on this for sure. But I think we have a page. Yes, we have a page for dexamethasone. So we can quickly have an idea of, what the treatment is, what the drug does, if it has side effects. So it's highly advisable to add also algorithms to make everything more fluid and more easy, okay? Mm -hmm. So oh, that's a top priority to make information as easy to find as possible. Sure. So let's head back to the gonadoblastoma page. So since this is our role model, whenever you have any doubt while you're writing your chapter, you should always think what Sahara would do it. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you go to this page, Karadoblastoma page, and then you, you check um, what, what kind of content was added. So you wanna make your chapter look like as much as possible to this one. Of course, you, you know, chapters will look will be very different. When you write about gonadoblastoma, it should be very different in comparison to hypertension. So mm -hmm. hypertension should be a gigantic um, chapter. Um, it, gotta, it has to have very detailed information. Gonadoblastoma is more specific. We can be more broadly, okay? So let's yeah. see um, some of the, part, of the um, characteristics of each page that mm -hmm. uh, makes it a bit different uh, in comparison to the others. So let's start, let's start with overview. Mm -hmm. The overview page, it will be the last one you will write. And why is that? Because it's a collection of the overview sections of the other pages. It will get easier when we 
see the other pages. So the overview page should have short sentences, like not more than one paragraph, explaining the basic idea that you want, the most important thing about the section that you want to, to teach. So for example, historical perspective. I only want to know if there, if there was any famous case or the person who discovered this disease. Regarding classification, just the most important form of classification of this disease. Mm -hmm. Regarding causes, just, just cite the most often causes. And then one thing that this page has, that it's different in comparison to the other ones, is that it has no references. We don't add references to the overview because the references we already be located on the specific pages that we have okay so that's a very big difference i would advise you not to spend a lot of time on this page because when you write the other ones you will naturally write this one so for example sure. let's head to a historical perspective Every page on Wikidoc has at least two sections. The first one is the overview. And the second one is, you know, the topic you're talking about, but more in a more detailed manner. Mm -hmm. So, for example, here we have overview, a very quick summary of what we want to, of the basic idea of the page. And then we have the details, you know, below it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So historical perspective, you can see we have the references here as well. So this is what we want to add, like information of when it was discovered, um, like if the, there was a, an important um, breakthrough discovery about the disease. So for example, uh, if, if there was a very important treatment that was developed like in the 90s, it should be cited here, okay? Yes. Any doubts so far? No, I'm good. Okay, so let's head to classification. Mm -hmm. The classification page. We should add um, information about how we classify the disease. So for example, pneumonia, we have typical pneumonia and atypical pneumonia, even though this particular classification is not being used so often these days. Um, mm -hmm. Regarding gonadoblastoma, this will be very important for tumors right because we have like many forms of staging and classification so this is the chapter that should contain uh, the page that should contain this information okay well luckily for us gonadoblastoma doesn't seem to have uh, a very um, detailed classification so this is what was written on this chapter so mm -hmm. let's head to pathophysiology sure the pathophysiology it's a more complex page because we have the overview as in the other mm -hmm. ones um, we have the pathophysiology section and also for many diseases we have the genetics and associated conditions i really advise you to keep these sections in your chapters so for example pneumonia or you know um, utis what is the how could do we have genetic factors that influence these diseases? Um, you know, I don't think we have uh, um, in a more like... Yeah, few, something like a communicable diseases, they do not have much of a genetical factors. A more environmental ones. So for example, mm -hmm. silicosis. What's, what's the genetic factor related to silicosis? So you should add Oh, there are no genes related to the disease or associated with the development of this disease, but always keep, keep it there. So that's easy for the readers to just find information about it. Because for example, there should be, if, if we find an information that in a certain group, we have a gene that makes the person more susceptible to, I don't know, silicosis, then, then the general population that have been exposed to environmental factors, then you know, this information should be there. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, for most of the diseases, this won't be very important. So then we have the physiology. Physiology should have just a very basic idea of how the, the 
our organism, you know, uh, our body should work normally. And then the pathogenesis, like pathogenesis, what is going wrong? So while physiology should have very basic information, pathogenesis should be in detail. You can uh, skip writing the physiology part, but <laughs> for most diseases, I think that it's really good to have at least a couple of sentences, you know, talking about this. So for example, pneumonia, oh, the lung expands and gets the air from, you know, the, the oxygen from the air into the alveoli. But when we have pneumonia, we have an inflammation which can make this, you know, gas exchange harder to happen. So you should describe this on pathogenesis. But the pathogenesis, lots of detail. Physiology, keep it short because this chapter is not about lung physiology, right? Yep. So, or kidney physiology. And then associated conditions. This is very important. And many of the writers sometimes are not paying enough attention to this part because usually when we are facing questions, step one, step two, CK, they will ask this stuff. So this is very important for, you know, for study using our chapters. So then we have gross pathology and microscopic pathology. If it makes sense, add this section. If it doesn't make sense, so for example, schizophrenia, from gross pathology, maybe you have changes, I don't know, in the corpus callosum or other structures, the brain amygdala, I don't know, but most often than not for psychiatric diseases, you won't have any change. So then just delete it, okay? okay. We don't expect you to keep it. And then we have the references. So mm -hmm. um, any doubts? No, I'm good. I'm really rushing a bit because we have many pages, you know, to review. Yeah, no problem. I can follow you well. You're very clear. <laughs> Thank you. So regarding causes, what, what causes gonadoblastoma? Here, usually we add a list of the things that are related to the development of gonadoblastoma. Please understand that there is a difference between pathophysiology, causes, and risk factors. For example, mm -hmm. risk factors are things that predispose you to the increases your risk of developing a certain disease causes you gotta have a casual uh, like um, a cause effect relationship okay so causes for pneumonia you could you can cite bacteria the uh, i don't know you you can you you can add causes for example for lung cancer as on smoking but it's also yeah. a risk factor risk many factor, times it will yeah. be good yeah. That's the question I got. Like, for example, smoking can be a cause. At the same time, it's also a risk factor. So yeah. how do we sometimes differentiate between them? That's very tricky. Um, because so for for example, um, hypertension, is it a cause of chronic kidney disease? It might, but it's more like a risk factor because it increases our chance. It's not every every single person that has hypertension that will, you know, develop chronic kidney disease. Mm -hmm. But for some diseases, the risk factor relationship with the disease development is so strong that I think we could add as a cause. Okay, sure. but this chap, this page is very easy to write. You just list the causes. You know. Okay. You should not waste way too much time giving some details. You can, mm -hmm. if they, they work as a risk factor, you can, you know, add more details on the risk factor section. Okay. Sure. So this page um, is a bit more complicated. Gonadoblastoma differential diagnosis. How can we differentiate gonadoblastoma from other diseases? This is tricky because many of our older pages, we have very, 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 very large tables. And these tables are hell to code, you know? When we are writing the code, they are very complex. So in an ideal world, we would want you to do this, do like, just like this, okay? But since you're starting, let's escape it for now. I will, you know, teach you how to develop tables in a basic manner and then you will upgrade on your ability to do this um, later on but let's start this um, you should just write 
prepare a list of the differential diagnosis. And if you're not adding a table, I would like you to, you know, um, explain what, how can you differentiate, uh, for example, gonadoblastoma from this germinoma? What is the, the difference between them? Like, do they have specific tumor markers? The presentation, this one evolves rapidly while the other one's slower or one is more malignant than the other, okay? So let's try to keep this simple. Usually when we have differential diagnosis page we, with this huge table, we lack the, the, the right column because it has no space with the, you know, the coding thing of the wiki. So don't, don't, never mind with that. I would just head back to the page and then keep going on. And another thing, if you are um, chosen to review a page and the page has a huge table like this, you should definitely check the content of the table. If it's accurate, if it's updated, but you know, um, if you don't feel like comfortable creating a new table, then you can write in your, in, in your own way, you know, what you feel it's best, okay? Yeah. So let's head back and then epidemiology. Epidemiology is, well, very straightforward. So mm -hmm. overview, you know, the general idea, you can notice that every overview section, we don't have any reference. Just, you know, ignore it. Yep. And then when we get more detailed information, we have the references here and here and here, and we have them listed here, okay? So we have the incidence, the prevalence, the age, the race, and the gender. These are the most common things that we add in the epidemiology and demographics. Mm -hmm. I highly advise you, if you can't find an information, you should look for it. For example, you, you should go on PubMed or Google, like gender, epidemiology, gonadoblastoma. If you can find some, something, you add. If you can't, just say, and um, so far, there is no information available regarding gender pre preference or race preference on the development of this disease, okay? Okay. And another thing, we usually uh, have these statements written per 100,000 individuals. This mm -hmm. was something that people agreed on um, um, very, very, very earlier in the Wikidoc development. So it's not okay. per million, it's not per 1,000, it's per 100,000, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have to rush. <laughs> so risk factors, um, overview, short sentence, then a list of the risk factors. You can add more detail if you want. I don't think there are uh, many details to write here in this specific chapter, but you know, you can do as you see fit, okay? Mm -hmm. Then screening, if there is a screening, you should add it. If not, ignore it, okay? okay. It's very straightforward as well. Mm -hmm. Natural history, that this is a more complicated, such as pathophysiology, because we have three topics to talk about. We have the overview, and then mm -hmm. natural history, complications and prognosis. So natural history, what is the natural history? We, we want people to write, what should we expect from the disease if we are not treating it? If we just okay. let it be, okay, the natural history of the disease. Complications, what are the risks? Like what's the patient risking in developing? Like for example, pneumonia, the patient may risk developing empyema or mm -hmm. I don't know, sepsis. You should add this kind of information there, okay? Okay. And prognosis, like what's the prognosis if this disease is left untreated? Or for example, if we start antibiotic therapy for pneumonia, what's the prognosis? Like then here you can add also some of the data from like 10% of the patients die 15% present with complications such as, and you describe. So re remember that epidemiology and demographics, they are referring to occurrence of the disease you're writing about. But when you're writing about a uh, 
outcome or complications, it should come, you know, in this page. Okay. Okay. Then in the diagnosis, we have many different chapters. Diagnostic study of choice. You will mention the diagnostic mm -hmm. study of choice. Choose one. So for example, pneumonia x-ray is the diagnostic study of choice. Why? And then you will, will give some detail here. What can we expect to find on an x-ray and why is that the diagnostic study of choice? So for example, it's cheap, it's fast. So you should mention this here, okay? Mm -hmm. This is more personal. So also regarding diagnosis, we have history and symptoms. So usually we add like this, the history, what kind of information the patient tell us um, regarding the disease development. So for example, for pneumonia, the patient can complain of cough, productive cough, of uh, shortness of breath, of, for example, fever. So these are, uh, are things that they may become positive in the, in the history. And the common symptoms, well, many things will overlap here, but history mm -hmm. is what the patient tells you. Symptoms is like what you, well, there's like the signs that you, the patient will not tell you, but you notice on them, you should also mm -hmm. include it here. Actually, they are better fit on the physical examination page. And the okay. symptoms is what they are referring to, like what they mm -hmm. are stating they are feeling. So for example, um, regarding gonadoblastoma, we have primary amenorrhea or virilization. So mm -hmm. what's common? What's less common symptom? Like the very typical presentation of this disease, what should we expect? So yes, if, we, if you find this information, please add. And when we are having, when we are performing our medical literature review, we usually come across this kind of information, okay? Mm -hmm. Physical examination. Again, we describe the signs that we find on the patient. So for gonadoblastoma, neck, physical examination, usually normal. Lungs, mm -hmm. usually normal. But then again, in genital urinary, we can find virilization in phenotypic women. And in men, we can find undescended testes and hypospadia. So, you know, also very straightforward. But this page, we organized by section of the body. So skin, PNT, mm -hmm. uh, neck, lungs, heart. So, you know, that's how we, we proceed and we make it as a list as to make it more straightforward. Mm -hmm. Lab findings, very straightforward. So we should have two more markers on cancer pages. Um, pneumonia, we should have uh, elevated um, C reactive protein or you know mm -hmm. leukocytosis with you know um, neutrophils predominance. So we, we describe the findings there. Electrocardiogram. So we shouldn't expect electrocardiogram as uh, uh, um, changes with gonadoblastoma, right? So we just write it down there. There are no ECG findings associated with gonadoblastoma, mm -hmm. but. If you're writing a chapter about short QT syndrome, well, it's all about electrocardiogram. So this page yeah. is gonna become very complicated. And then you should mm -hmm. list the changes that we are expect of finding in, in, such, mm -hmm. in such patients. And if you manage to find a copper left, then it's a topic for a different lecture. Like if yeah. you can find a copy left source of a electrocardiogram, you can copy and paste it here, okay? Sure. Then we have x-ray, um, very straightforward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Echo and ultrasound, also very straightforward. They are describing the findings on ultrasound. Mm -hmm. I will just keep going because I, I wasn't notified that the, the meeting will be over soon, so. I would just keep going, save it. And then if we, if the, the Zoom app cuts off in the middle, I, I will create another meeting and I will send you the link soon, okay? Sure.
So ultrasound, very straightforward. CT scan, also straightforward. Mm -hmm. Here we have an issue, a formatting issue that I have to fix. Let me just see it very quickly. Okay, I, I have to fix this later. It looks like it's not something so easy or straightforward, but I'll have a look at this later. And, um, oh, I think I know it now. Yes, it's fixed. Yeah, it was just a, a space. So okay. MRI, MRI um, mm -hmm. I think this could be changed in this chapter because MRI is not usually indicated, but if you perform an MRI, you will find many different stuff. So I think that this page should be changed, but we, we are undergoing some projects with COVID-19. We will come back to this chapter later on. Sure. And then, for example, if we had other imaging findings, so mm -hmm. I don't know, um, like PET, PET scan. scan. Yes, yes, precisely. We should add this here. And with other diagnostic studies, we can include like, for example, endoscopy, colonoscopy. Um, we can include, so for example, manometry, any other thing that was not addressed before, you just put on that page. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we head to the treatment, the medical therapy, surgery, and prevention. So medical therapy, how should we do them? Should we treat the patient regarding medicine and physical therapy and other stuff? So even diet, you should add on this page. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, this page also sh should be you know, improved. We have, okay, hormone, hormonal replacement therapy, but what kind of drugs could we use for this specific disease? We could add more detail here. Mm -hmm. So surgery. Surgery is the most important section for many tumors and many other diseases. So when we talk about surgery, it's very important because for many diseases, we have clear indication. If we have clear indication of surgery, so for example, um, if I have a subdural hematoma, we have a clear indication for intervening or just like, okay, let's, let's just be conservative and not do anything. Just uh, follow the patient to see, follow up the patient to see if this will get, get worse or if it will improve. So if we, we have- include the yes, criteria for the surgery, yeah. The criteria and also the contraindications. So when mm -hmm. I should not do anything because the risks, outweigh the benefits. So this information should be here. And I would also uh, really like, um, because we are focusing on medical education. So if you feel like describing the surgery, so for example, uh, obes obesity, like the gastric reduction surgery, if you want to describe a little bit, add some pictures from copyleft sources, be my guest. You are more than more than welcome to describe the surgery here. Okay. Sure. For example, appendicitis. We should have some details about the appendectomy surgery on on the page, right? Mm -hmm. Primary prevention. How can I prevent developing gonadoblastoma? And then we also have secondary prevention. Like, how can I prevent the complications from this disease? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have, I have three other pages to discuss the cost, the cost effectiveness of therapy, future or investigational therapies, and the patient mm -hmm. information. Usually, these are kind of optional. Okay. Okay. I really advise you to work on them, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's really hard to find cost effectiveness. You know, yeah. because this is very important in the US. Actually, it's important worldwide, but in the US, everything's so, so expensive. So if we have a therapy that's much cheaper than the other one, I mm. think it's a good idea to, to write something about there, okay? Sure. 
future or investigation of therapies. It's really important for new diseases such as COVID-19. We are still mm -hmm. developing some drugs to treat these and new, new vaccines. And patient information is, um, we have a, a questionnaire like of most common questions that people have regarding this disease. So okay. it's important for, you know, if, for lay people, if they are accessing our, our platform, if they want to find some information that's more easy to understand mm -hmm. for them. Okay. But this is also a bit, you know, optional. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is about the pages, right? So this is their structure regarding the micro chapter um, type mm -hmm. of chapter. So now I will um, very quickly talk about when you write your chapter, you're gonna have many doubts. You're gonna be thinking, how can I start this? Like, okay, overview, what should I add here? Pathophysiology, oh my goodness, I have so much to talk about the pathophysiology of Down syndrome. How can I start? What kind of information I should make sure that I'm, I'm adding there? So mm -hmm. we have developed a tutorial and this okay. is going to be your most important page here. It's the, it is the editor's help menu. Mm -hmm. So when we click here, you have all the resource you need the guides for page writing, for references, for editing, for adding tables and images, for mm -hmm. whatever you feel like, it's here, okay? So in the beginning of the page, we have two columns, the right one and the left one. The left one starts with a list of the ongoing projects that we have on Wikidoc. Mm -hmm. You won't access this very often. Then the quick starts, like the very, very basic stuff, how to create a new login, how to edit a page, how to start a new page. Mm -hmm. And then we have details on how to edit, how to add algorithms, how to you know mess with bullet points, change colors, um, how, what copyleft sources do we have to add some you know, information on chapters. So for example, I won't go through every one of them, but let's see algorithms. Mm -hmm. So here we have a tutorial, how to create an algorithm. And as you can okay. see, it's very straightforward. It's complicated, it's not easy, but it's very straightforward. And then you can see what the things you type and how it will reflect on the things that you will see in your chapter. Yes, I think, yeah, uh, knowing this is the most important to convert the text into hyperlinks or headings yes. or... Yes, and this, and this is, it starts really simple, you know, mm -hmm. with simple algorithms. And then we have some, you know, um, how can I say samples for much more complicated algorithms? Mm -hmm. and, when you, and when you have the opportunity to develop an algorithm, you can just copy a sample and edit as you see fit. And then by reading the beginning of the page, you will be mm -hmm. able to understand like, if you, if you change this, the effect you have is that. So mm -hmm. I will go, I will teach you on how to develop an algorithm, but it's really complicated. Let's just, here's the manual. You can, you know, start doing your own algorithms if you read this page. Mm -hmm. So for uh, another example, another important thing, references, how to add references. So we also have a tutorial, on how to do it. Usually we use the first one, okay? The sum search biomedical citation maker. The other ones, we use generally when the first one fails. Okay. For example, when we want to reference some books, we use Autobib. But the, mm -hmm. you know, for most and for the most part, you will be using only the first one. Okay? okay. And now the most valuable part of the editor's uh, help menu, it's the right column. 
here okay. we have the information on how to edit specific pages. So for example, if you're having some trouble, like Down syndrome, pathophysiology, mm -hmm. what should I write here? We have mm -hmm. it prepared here, okay? So let's read what's in here. So there's an introduction. The page should be named, you know, very simple. Mm -hmm. And then for the overview, what kind of, if you feel like everything is important, I just can't select a sentence to add on the overview section. No mm -hmm. problem. You look for these template sentences. We have prepared this so as to make as easy as possible. So yeah. for example, COVID-19, the pathogen name is usually transmitted via the transmission route to the human mm -hmm. host. You can start your page on COVID-19 using this. Okay. So yeah, Down syndrome. Uh, genes mm -hmm. involved in the pathogenesis. Of course, not a single gene. It's much bigger than that. But you can use such uh, sentences as a uh -huh. template, and then you add it to fit in what you want to, to talk about. And then Very you have good. some examples. This will help a lot, I guess. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I am also the kind of person who thinks that everything is important. You know, my first eight pages they were all high, highlighted, you know? <laughs> yeah, so. I'm, I can relate to that. I'm also such kind of person. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's complicated sometimes. So this is very, very handy. So I mean, these template sentences are regarding the overview, but mm -hmm. we have the pathogenesis section. And we also have template sentences here. So mm -hmm. of course, for many diseases, um, you will have to write paragraph, paragraphs, add images in order to convey your information in a clear manner. But um, you can start using the template sentences. You know, I always advise just copy and paste one of the template sentences that you feel like it fits your chapter mm -hmm. and then you go on from there. Okay. It's the easiest thing to do. And mm -hmm. then you see genetics, associated conditions. We have a, um, also uh, some, some templates here. What you should do while writing gra about grass pathology and microscopic pathology. So mm -hmm. everything's here. This, Basically everything is here that can guide us. Yes, yes, yes. This is a good... This was this whole section. We have a problem with Wikidoc because usually people already know what you are writing about. So, for example, I'm going to write about pneumonia. I know a lot of a lot of things about pneumonia, and I want mm -hmm. to, you know, create a good chapter. So people usually they rush because they want to end to finish the chapter writing as quickly as possible, and then they rush into the chapter writing, but they forget to check the templates like how to write in a clear manner. And then when they are done, they think their work is perfect. And many times content wise, it is perfect. But when they sent for our review and we compare to our chapters on Wikidoc, it looks nothing like the regular ones. So then we have mm -hmm. to tell the scholar, okay, it has amazing content, but you gotta rewrite it. <laughs> and yeah. reorganize it. So mm -hmm. this is an advice I give you for you to sure. save your time. First, mm -hmm. check the editor's helping you page and then start writing your own page. Sure. It's, it's very, very, very handy to have it. So, well, I am very, very surprised that we have been here for more than half an hour, 40 minutes. And yeah, I still have a message. We are only two. If it's two, there is no limit for the meeting time. Oh, I didn't know that. That's good to know. Okay, let's go on then. Mm -hmm. So um, going back to our YouTube channel, we have discussed mm -hmm. the types of pages, the pink part, the blue part, the green part, the editor's help menu, Okay, mm -hmm. tables, yeah, I will try to explain to you about referencing algorithms. No, algorithms, it, you know, let's 
leave it for mm -hmm. a second. Tables, sure. I can give you some tips right now. Single page versus mm -hmm. micro chapter. I think we have been through this. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm good. I mean, I watched that video, so, yep. Yes, yes. So, yeah. And images also, re, you know, it demands more, more content. So, mm -hmm. yes. Um, let's uh, talk about references and tables because I think that when we get ready with it, um, you will be ready to start writing your own chapters. Okay. Sure. Do you know also how to perform some medical literature review? Do you have access on PubMed? Do you know um, how to okay. do it? Uh, yes. Uh, so I I know like because based on my research that I'm doing, we do literature review. So yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. So yes, yes. Let's start then with references because it's one of the trickiest parts. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use one of my chapters. Sure. Hmm. Aptos also. Let's talk about causes. OK. So yes, I have this page here. And then, oh, let me write about risk factors. Yes, because if something goes wrong, this is a shorter thing to fix. So when we edit a page on Wikidoc, we have two tools to use. We have the edit, okay, mm -hmm. and the edit source. And when you log in into our platform, we, besides every section, we have edit and edit source, edit source, edit, edit okay. source. Mm -hmm. right? So the difference between these ones from this one is that when you click it here, it will allow you to edit from this section down all the mm -hmm. way to the end, okay? Or maybe just this section, let me see. I think it's just this section. Yeah, just this section, I'm sorry. And if you click it here, you will be able the to section. Mm -hmm. the whole page, including these sections, and including the things that come before what's written in the chapter. So, so, for example, overview, it's like that, only this section. The mm -hmm. difference between edit and edit source is that the edit tool allows you to edit the section as, for example, we do using the Word or WordPad application, okay? Mm -hmm. So, for example, you can type it as you, as you want. So, um, let me think. After those yeah. also more F easy. Yeah, ethyl ulcers are very annoying. It can be um, painful mm -hmm. and cause significant discomfort. Okay, so mm -hmm. I have written this and I'm gonna change, save the changes. So yes, you see, it works here, but maybe I want to write about, I want to add another section. So for example, or I want to highlight something. Mm -hmm. I can make it bold. I can make it italic. I can make it, I can remove the changes that I've added. Um, I can create hyperlinks. So for example, ulcers. Ulcers, it is a medical term. I can create a hyperlink just like this. So it's blue now. And if mm -hmm. I say, it would take me to the ulcer page. Okay. Very simple. Okay. So mm -hmm. we use this, these tools for bold and italic, this for creating hyperlinks. You gotta mm -hmm. select the part that you want to create the hyperlink. The citing part, don't use it. We have disabled it because we had um, some bug here that was messing everything up. So we do okay. And if we want to add um, bullet points, we can mm -hmm. do this. Oops. Yeah. Sometimes okay. it's, it displayed wrong, but when we save, it's correct. Or we can also add numbers. Oops. 
like this, a numbered list. Mm -hmm. People usually hate them. People go crazy with aphthos ulcers. So I can add many different things about aphthos ulcers as I see fit. So, mm -hmm. yeah, a different thing that you can do is change the way. For example, I want to add another heading. So, how do people react to ulcers? After ulcers. And then I have added another heading, okay? Mm -hmm. So, for example, I want to talk about classification. I can do it also. Okay. Oops. Subheading. Okay. And then. And then you can, you know, do this to make your chapter look more organized mm -hmm. with these hierarchies, um, higher, hierarchical, sometimes English is so tricky, hierarchical um, structures, because it's way better than to have a whole paragraph describing this, this stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's see. So this is using the edit, edit tool, but sometimes, it is buggy. Sometimes we had a bug last year that whenever we used the edit tool, our references would disappear. And this okay. was horrible, horrible, because then we had to, you know, try to find, holy cow, where did this information came from? Come came from, from so yeah. It was hell. So I would not advise you, uh, I would tell you like, try to avoid using the edit if you mm -hmm. want if you feel comfortable what i would tell you is like write your whole page using edit first and mm -hmm. then when you are perfecting it move to the edit source to be okay. honest these days i always use edit source i do not use edit but when i started i started using edit mm -hmm. so regarding edit source how do this look like? It's like this. It's not very complicated. So headers like these, the bigger ones, like overview, we just add this symbol twice, mm -hmm. like this. Hey, how? Yep. And we can click on show preview. Mm -hmm. And then we can see what we are doing, what's the effect of what we are coding here. So, but sometimes this, I, I, I don't want to make it look like this, this because this is a topic of this section. So mm -hmm. how can I convert this? I just add one more symbol here and another one. Let me show preview. So you see, now okay. it looks like this, is mm -hmm. a division, it's a, some classification, some section from this bigger section. Mm -hmm. And I can do this further if I add another symbol here and another one, but I think four is the limit. Oh no, no, do not say, okay. But you can see like this is bigger than this. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the edit source. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, regarding if I want to add bullet points, I use this symbol and yeah, I can okay. add bullet points. So mm -hmm. classification. Um, Aphthos ulcers can be classified into three categories. Um, Painful, not painful, let's just pretend, and ugly ones. 
just you know i don't know let's just put in something so you see how it looks like but it looks like it looks messy so how can i make it better well classification as a heading or mm -hmm. yes yes let's remove this let's add classification as a header and um, we can use the bullet points only on the items so let's remove these number ones by the way the only thing that differentiates bullet points from numbered list is the symbol with this okay. we use this little star and with this we use the number one you know mm -hmm. this um i don't know this Hash. Um, okay. hashtag yeah it's hash yeah so let's remove it because you got it um so for example painful but we have three types of painful ethos ulcers we have the the ones that are i don't know red mm -hmm. we have the purple and the whitish ones you see what I've done here? I have added double stars here. Mm -hmm. So that when I do it, it looks like it's a subclassification of the topic that was above. Okay? Yes. So that's how we do, yeah, mm -hmm. using the code. It's very easy, you know? But so sometimes it is. Yes. Uh, so if any time I get it out, I can go to the editor help menu and I can look it up there, right? Exactly. Or you can send me a message on WhatsApp and I'll try to answer you as soon as possible. It works too. <laughs> sure. Okay. So if you want to create a hyperlink, how can you do it? You just do this. Okay. And it will create a hyperlink. Of course, we don't have a page called red, but if mm -hmm. we had one, it would be bluish and, you know, okay. it's clickable. And now it wants to send me to a different page for me to create a page called red, but I'm not going there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yes, and we usually do this for, from all, for all the medical terms. So, for example, have those ulcers we do have. Look. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, this is the basic editing. Um, when we use this, usually, this is kind of complicated, but sometimes it's when we press enter, you know, we get a space, like, like next slide. So um, I don't know. It skips a line, okay? Mm -hmm. So you just type this. Um, to like basically yeah, right. add a space in between two sentences. Yeah, I think like it's like a break on the page, like break this line and go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that regarding decoding, this is the trickiest one while writing text. I think this is what you will be using the most. So mm -hmm. now, any doubts? No, nope, I'm good. Please interrupt me because I can talk nonstop. <laughs> no, 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 I'm good. So, okay. Uh, let's delete everything mm -hmm. and save. Okay. So now the page looks like what it was um, before. before. I was messing mm -hmm. with it. So, if you do something like, holy cow, I've deleted the whole page. Oh no, what, what should I do? View history. Okay. And then all the changes you've done will be written here. And you can mm -hmm. click on undo. Okay. And mm -hmm. they will ask, like, do you really want to do it? Or if sometimes it, it may be tricky because you know there are conflicts, but most often than not, it works. Okay. Yes, well, I have the whole page like this. So mm -hmm. let's talk about tables now, because tables is, is another um, ability that you will be required to have. So mm -hmm. we are talking about three types of ulcers. So we have major aphthose stomatitis, minor aphthose stomatitis, and herpetiform stomatitis. 
So I want, I, I don't want it like this. I really don't like bullet points. I want to add a table. Mm -hmm. We come here and click on table. You can code for a table, right? But not even I use this because it's so complicated. Just start with this and then mm -hmm. you add it as you see fit, okay? Okay. So let's um, add here ulcer types. Mm -hmm. And then we have the major ones. We have the minor. Mm -hmm. And we have the herpetic form stomatitis. So then we have um, in, uh, incidents. You add most common. You see the information mm -hmm. that I have here. I'm just describing here. Yeah. Not so common. And Please, rare. Common. Mm -hmm. And then I have size. We can smaller than one centimeter. Um, this is greater than one centimeter. And this is um, variable. Mm -hmm. Aspect leaves scar, no scar, coalesce and becomes larger. May leave scars. So let's save. You see? Now we're all set. It's a beautiful table, very easy to do. But I was very fortunate because the number of lines and columns was just the ones that I needed. But for example, if I wanna talk about pain, I just mm -hmm. click on the table, click on the arrow, insert after, pain. Say like, not very painful. Uh, painful, painful, um, yeah. And then we can also add lines, insert above if we forgot some item or, mm -hmm. you know, of course, like, oh um, no, I did a mistake, delete row. And then insert below, okay? So you can do lots of stuff, it's so good. And then if you want to change anything, besides the number of rows or the number of columns, mm -hmm. you have to add it in the code. Let's see how it looks like in the code. You know? Oh. Yeah. And then we have codes specifying for colors. If you want to change the background color, you want to add the blue, a beautiful blue line, you mm -hmm. know, you can change here, but this is complicated. Um, it, I think it's out of the reach for the first training. So let's leave like this. You just mm -hmm. write the tables like this. You can merge some cells as well, yeah. but you know, it may mm -hmm. be very complicated. So don't bother with this right now. You, you will have the opportunity to learn it, but yeah, no need for, for doing this right now. Sure. So yeah, I'm gonna delete it. Yeah, delete table and then leave this this page as it was and now the last topic of today's training mm -hmm. references okay okay so um i have one reference here but let's say i have consult i have a different reference so let's work on pubmed and um okay Let's look for aphthos also. Okay, this was, the only, was this the only, one, the only one? Okay, let's use this one. Aphthos ulcers and oral ulcerations. Okay. okay. I think, yeah. So let's pretend I found some really interesting information in this chapter. I have rewritten it and added it to my chapter and it's, here, this first sentence. Mm -hmm. So how can I 
prepare a reference to this paper. So mm -hmm. what's your best friend on Wikidoc? My WhatsApp number? No, editor's help menu. <laughs> you go back to the editor's help menu. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you come to references. And remember what I told you? We always go for the first one, unless it's broken. But if mm -hmm. it's broken, it won't load. So you know it. So okay. we have here the page of the biomedical citation maker. So mm -hmm. it requests us either a PMID, a DOI, or PMCID. So mm -hmm. whatever is easier. But always, please, always check the reference that's been created. Because sometimes we add the PMID or the DOI, and it mm -hmm. says like, uh, I don't know, we want some about aptos ulcer, and then we have a chapter about kidney stones. Like sometimes we find some bugs every now and then. So just select the PMID, copy, mm -hmm. paste it here, and click on submit. Okay. By the way, if the PMID is invalid, you will always find this one. Digitoxin metabolism by red liver microsomes. Okay. Because its PMID is zero. Whenever you have an invalid PMID, you will have a reference to this thing. And the problem is uh, sometimes you are in a hurry, you don't notice it, and you copy and paste it in your chapter. And then you see there, digitoxin metabolism by red liver microsomes. And it makes mm -hmm. no sense, right? Because we're writing about athletes also. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we have here different forms of um, reference uh, of references. We you always use the first one. That's for mm -hmm. Wikidoc. We just click it, copy. We come to our chapter. We click on mm -hmm. Edit Source. We go to the end of our sentence. We do not add space. We just copy and paste, and then save changes you see now it's here first okay. one aptos ulcer and oral ulcerations so you do not did you uh, so after the line ending you gave a space or you did not give a space no, no space. space no space okay. because if i give space if i add the space here mm -hmm. it will look like this and it looks horrible it doesn't seem, it's, it seems like it's detached from the sentence. So mm -hmm. this is not the standard for scientific citation. So you just remove it. And now it's really together. So you know mm -hmm. that you took this, that this sentence comes from this reference. Yeah. And um, let's click it to see if it works. Yes, we have now a reference to the original. Um, Mm -hmm. a paper so you see it's really 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 um straightforward so mm -hmm. there's a different thing so for example um let me think of um aptos ulcers on google okay mm -hmm. so i want a book about it a book on aptos ulcer. Okay. If I take an information from this book, for example, mm -hmm. and I want to add a reference here, it used to work. I'm not sure it will work right now, but let's try. Okay. Editors help menu, mm -hmm. references, because sometimes you will want to use textbooks, right? Not only mm -hmm. um, articles on PubMed. So first one, no, we use Autobib. And okay. then we copy the ISBN 10. No. And choose the Wikipedia format. Yes. We copy here, get mm -hmm. citations on Wikipedia format. Copy. Then yeah, let's let's pretend that it's like let's put it beside our original reference, the, the mm -hmm. one that I've created. Save changes. 
huh yeah i have to work on this <laughs> it's not okay. working you see it added the text is okay but i i really have to um the find the should go into the references right yes yes it should be here not here and it there mm -hmm. should be just a number here but that's okay it, you know if you need to cite a textbook you send me a message and i will find it out for you sure yeah no no it was not um, just because i put it together yeah i, I will find about that later mm -hmm. so wow one hour and 10 minutes of kind of lecture here so how any doubts do you feel like you're ready to start your first chapter yes i'm okay. excited i might be learning more when i do it because yeah i might be doing some mistakes and i'll get back to you whenever i get it out okay that's that's really fantastic i will stop the recording right now so mm -hmm. um screen sharing stop i think